Thank you. I'll call the uh, public hearing uh, meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. Introduction of amendments to the agenda. Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, I have none. Thank you. A motion to confirm the agenda for the public hearing of September 15th, 2021 be approved as presented. Moved by Councillor Fanlin, seconded by Councillor Bath. All in favor? Carried. Declarations of pecuniary interest. Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, I have none. Thank you. Applications. Shoreline Road Allowance Closure and Sale. Applicant Samantha Stiles. Introduction and overview. This public hearing convened under the Ontario Municipal Act 2001 to close part of a shoreline road allowance at the location described below, pursuant to sections eight and nine of the Municipal Act 2001 to authorize the sale of the lands to the owner, Samantha Stiles, of the abutting lands. The subject lands are known locally as 527 Moosehorn Road and are legally known as Lot 16, Plan M386, Parcel 28933, Sioux Lookout. Confirmation of notice. The planning coordinator will give notice, will confirm how notice was advertised. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lawrence. Notice was circulated to internal staff and certain external bodies by email. Notice was also advertised in the Lookout Bulletin and on the municipal website and various social media, sent by mail to abutting neighbors and various agencies, and signs were also posted at the property entrance. Thank you. The planning coordinator will provide a summary of the application. Thank you, Mayor Lawrence. A request to purchase the unopened shoreline road allowance abutting the property known locally as 527 Moose Horn Road was submitted by the property owner, Samantha Stiles. It is the owner's intention to use the additional land to install a dock. The portion of shoreline road allowance that abuts Ms. Stiles' property has not been opened as a municipal highway and so provides no public or emergency access to the surrounding lands. If this area is sold, adjoining landowners will not be deprived of access to their properties. An administration fee of $1,250 was paid by Ms. Stiles to cover the cost of advertising and staff time to process the application. The purchaser is responsible for all survey costs, legal fees, and registration costs. In terms of land purchase price, the tariff of fees recommends fair market value if the addition results in a significant increase in value or a $1,000 flat fee plus HST. Council has the option to charge the flat fee or to require a market value appraisal to establish the price. The purchaser would be responsible for acquiring a market appraisal. Staff are recommending council charge the flat fee of $1,000 plus HST, as the land is unlikely to add significant value to Ms. Stiles' property. Thank you. The planning coordinator will read any correspondence received from government agencies and municipal staff. Through you, Mayor Lawrence, there were no comments received from government agencies or municipal staff. Thank you. The planning coordinator will read any correspondence received from the public. Through you, Mayor Lawrence, there were no comments received by the general public. Thank you. The applicant or a representative is invited to speak to the application. You know, um, thank you very much, Mayor Lawrence. Uh, we don't really have much to add other than we kind of want to dot our T's, cross our, or, uh, cross our T's, dot our I's, um, and making sure that if we're going to install something that we want to make sure that we do it properly. Very good. Thank you. Questions from members of council, members of the public, sorry, questions from members of council. Council first. Any questions? No. And clerk, uh, do I need to go through the questions from the members of the public since there are none, none present? Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, I would defer to the um, planning coordinator just in case there was anything uh, submitted by email or anything like that in the last couple of hours. Through you, Mayor Lawrence, I can confirm that there has been nothing received last minute, so we should be okay to uh, move on from this section. All right, thank you. Um, conclusion and right of appeal process. This is a public hearing convened under the Ontario Municipal Act 2001 to authorize a partial closure of the shoreline road allowance 
abutting the property known locally as 527 Moosehorn Road and legally known as Lot 16, Plan M386, Parcel 28933, Sulakout. The motion is that council receives the planning coordinator's report dated September 15, 2021, report number 2021-123, respecting the road allowance closure and sale application for the shoreline road allowance adjacent to Ms. Samantha Stiles property at 527 Moosin Road, Sulacoat. Moved by Councillor Lego, seconded by Councillor Howie. All in favor? Carried. And then this will move as a motion then to the regular council meeting uh, to uh, to confirm this. Uh, so for the for uh, Ms. Stiles, the it, it will be on tonight's agenda. It will be added to tonight's agenda as a motion, and will be dealt with tonight uh, at the during the regular council meeting to complete uh, the formalities of this. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Confirmatory bylaw that bylaw number 92-21 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Sula Coat, September 15, 2021 public hearing be read a first, second and third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Howie, seconded by Councillor Fallon. All in favor? Carried. And we are adjourned from the public hearing and we'll move into the regular council meeting. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. These are open meetings, but we'll understand if you don't want to. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Uh, call meeting to order at uh, 5.37 p.m. Introduction of amendments to the agenda. Uh, to you, Mayor Lawrence, uh, two potential amendments, uh, if Council so desires, arising from the uh, public hearing. Uh, so the first would be item 7.8. Seven under staff reports, which essentially is just the motion to authorize the passing of the bylaw uh, for the um, road, uh, shoreline road allowance closure and sale. Well, wow, it's, uh, it's a mouthful for me this evening anyway. Um, and uh, item number 10.1 or 10A uh, would be bylaw number 90-21. And that's the, regarding the same... Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, that's to actually uh, authorize the uh, uh, closure, uh, declaring it surplus and sale of the road. So that would, in fact, be the only bylaw in the bylaw section tonight? That's correct. And the 7.7, 7, uh, I'll just refer to that number when we look at items requiring separate uh, discussion, and it would be uh, included there in that case. Okay. So we have uh, a motion that the agenda for the regular council meeting of September 15th, 2021 be approved as amended. Moved by Councillor Cassidy, seconded by Councillor Lego. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Declarations of pecuniary interest. Uh, to you, Mayor Lawrence, I have none. Thank you. And. Uh, Adoption of minutes that the minutes of the public hearing held on August 18, 2021, the statutory public meeting held on August 18, 2021, and the regular council meeting held on August 18, 2021, be approved as presented. Moved by Councillor Fanlin, seconded by Councillor Howie. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion. Regarding minutes of municipal boards, commissions, and committees, that the minutes of the truth, municipal truth and reconciliation committee meetings held on June 14th and July 19th, 2021, be received. Moved by Councillor Timpson, seconded by Councillor Fanlin. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Determination of items requiring separate discussion. Item 7.1, Community Building Fund Recreation Project. Thank you. Item 7.2, Phase 2 Umferville Trail Recreation Trail Reconstruction. Councillor Cassidy. Item 7.3, loan renewal. Thank you. 
Thank you. Item 7.4, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. I think we do need to lift this because there are options there. So we will lift this. Item 7.5, updating council appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. And I think, again, we need to lift this because we need to appoint somebody. Item 7.6, municipal impl implementation of proof of vaccination for a recreation center. Councilor Lego and Howie will lift. And I, item 7.7, .7, the motion regarding the road allowance. Good, thank you. So confirming the items that were lifted, 7.2, 7.4, 7.5, and 7.6. I see no objections. Uh, so a motion to adopt the items not requiring separate discussion, items 7.1, 7 7.3, and 7.7. .7. Moved by Councillor Lego, seconded by Councillor Fenelon. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Staff reports, community, nope, not the community building fund, sorry. <laughs> 7.2, the council authorizes and directs staff to submit a phase two application to the Canada Community Revitalization Fund, CCRF, for the reconstruction of the Umpherville Trail. Moved by. Councillor Fanlin, seconded by Councillor Timpson. And discussion starting with Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, I'd like to uh, just inquire to staff is what was taken out from the scope of project as was discussed to try and reduce some of the cost. I, I see in the financial implications, the breakdown is still, the total cost is still the same, albeit uh, coming from two different funding sources now as opposed to one. So what, what was looked at to try and uh, reduce the cost of that? Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, uh, we have yet to look at uh, the breakdown for the cost. Um, that would usually happen once the funding is approved and the project goes forward. When it goes out for tender, when it comes back, that's when we would look at exactly um, what would be cut or what sort of changes could occur in order to um, break the cost down. Because this is just a preliminary estimate, it could come in um, lower than what we originally anticipated. Okay, so the financial implications aren't set in stone, I guess is what we're saying Correct. for the long-term debt. Um, is there, is there any options after this is submitted to look at the possibility of adjusting the scope in regards to keeping costs down? I know we did kind of outline the amount we wanted to do, but is there options to maybe look at doing the more heavily used sections of the trail as opposed to the trail in its entirety? Is, can that be done after the approval of a phase two application or are we committed to the entirety of the trail? Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, how it would work is um, we would put uh, the RFP out, we would wait for it to come back, and then from that, we usually determine, um, are we going to do the full scope of the trail system, depending on how the quote comes back, are we going to look at other products, um, and so forth, and and everything and everything else also in regards to i believe at the last council meeting in regards to this it was talked about maybe spreading out uh the lights um for larger distance between the two all those things would be determined during that time okay so this will this will be coming back if something's approved with the tendering and the options of what exactly we're going to be moving forward with, um, that's, I'm okay with that. My next question is, I think I asked this at the last one, but I'm wondering again, now that we have two funding sources with this, what is our commitment for a municipal portion? Do we have one still? 
the commitment for the municipal portion is still is now uh, six thirty nine four forty. It, so is there a is there a percentage that we are required a percentage of the total project we are required to commit with this funding application as some of the most most of them are you know maybe a 70 30 60 40 split do we have that percentage set out that we are required to fund through you mayor lawrence through my understanding of this project is they will fund up to five hundred thousand dollars worth of the project and we would have to contribute 10% uh, or more. Okay, so 10% is our minimum commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good, thank you. Anything further, Council? Councilor Lego. Yeah, um, also, I guess when it comes back to Council, maybe that we should increase the contingency for products, considering some of the last ones have been coming in a bit, bit higher. Um, we sort of get surprised with some of these projects that are coming to the table um, with the increases 20 30 percent so um, maybe a, a bit more contingency uh, cash set aside uh, when we when we get a final total would be a would be a good thing to see just in just in case through you mayor lawrence yes we can do that councillor timpson yeah, has there been any uh, movement in um, uh, getting a, a fundra a private fundraising uh, campaign going with the public? Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, not at this time. Originally, the phase one application went in at the end of July, and we were notified at uh, a couple of weeks after that the phase one had already been approved through um, the CCRF this, um, in a good way came to a surprise for us in regards that they pushed it through right away. So we're staff and uh, the CAO, we're all still working on how all that is going to uh, unfold moving forward. Okay, uh, thank you. Would it be worthwhile to even start to put the word out there to certain key individuals that this could come, or possibly the chamber, um, people that use the trail? Might be worthwhile just to, to get the word out that this could happen, this could be in the works. Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, I would have to be a discussion between uh, the CAO and the clerk and myself as to exactly how all this is going to transpire. Okay, thank you. Anything further, Council? Councillor Howley. Yeah, I, I, Councillor Cassidy touched uh, on the specific cost saving measures and we did discuss that a bit in the in the last council meeting, so I, I'll try not to uh, repeat his questions. But um, one of the things that stood out to me was uh, this EcoFlex uh, tiling for the for the walkway, um, and understanding it is of course environment, environmentally friendly and is you know favorable for for use. But I'm just wondering if uh, if staff could explain why this, and if there is a significant uh, cost difference between asphalt and, and this uh, product. Through, <laughs> through you, Mayor Lawrence, it was recommended by the previous public works manager that a certain portion of the trail use this product, which would help for um, uh, corrosion, for seepage of the rain, and for the type of soil that's underneath. Um, Go, go ahead, CAO. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> uh, may I make a, a suggestion? Uh, sorry, Councillor Howell. I just, I think, it, I have a question for uh, staff. It is, it, is it the intention to engage uh, an engineering firm to prepare the tender documents? Yes, that's in the intention, uh, Your Worship. Um, uh, or um, depending on, um, our new public works uh, sure. manager, uh, yeah. that person may be able to do it themselves. It all depends on uh, we're just on the time. waiting. Um, I that, just, I, that, uh, 
announcement. Um, but um, as far as the type of product and the 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 the, um, the uh, I was going to say I was going to count. I think that uh, council is putting staff at a disadvantage asking technical questions of staff when really we don't have the the public works manager now or the the um, consultant on board. I, I, to my mind, the best way to answer the questions about what's in the scope and what's out and uh, costs and differences between projects once we have um, an engineer or an engineering firm engaged to assist with that process. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sorry, sorry, CEO. As, as yeah. far as pavement versus this this other type of surface, we're going to investigate both to determine which is the better, which is, should be used, and and then scope that out. And we could have it in our tender to either pave or do the other one to compare the price to see if we could uh, reach some cost savings in that respect. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask the question because it was. Uh, uh, quite a degree of specificity around that product and multiple mentions uh, in both of the, uh, the applications. Uh, one of my other questions was uh, regarding the um, consultation of, uh, of groups or, or other um, potential partners in, the, in this project. I know um, having, the, having the health authority right there and the mention of the crosswalk, I, I don't know if it'll be of value to to mention them in the application, they are mentioned in another section for uh, for the you know, warranting of, of this development, and also uh, potentially the, the snowmobile club may be of good mention in that uh, as they you know pretend they use the, the majority of the trail um, during the winter months. So unless that is the intention to change, I'm not sure. Uh, but just I wanted to add that uh, that piece, and then um, one of the other pieces was in the the seventh box uh, on the phase two application. I just noticed there was a, 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 it looks like it was typed in. I'm not sure if it was in the draft and then uh, ported over into this, but it, it says to please explain how you will track the jobs impact and numbers of assets. I'm not sure, it just looks in the same text as the, um, as the, the addition to the form. So I don't know if that was the intention or if it's uh, just a formatting piece, that's all. Treasurer, was that a question? I... Oh, through you, Mary Lawrence, I, I wrote down that section. I'd have to um, look to confirm. Thank you. Anything further, Council? Seeing nothing further, then I will call the vote on uh, the motion. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The Council designates September 30th each year as a holiday in recognition of the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, or the Council observe the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation holiday on September 30th, 2021, and review the holiday for subsequent years, or the Council not designate to observe the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation holiday on September 30th remain as a regular day of work. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, am I, can I have, ask for a mover for the three? How shall I do this? Just ask for a mover for the three, and then we'll decide during the discussion. Okay. M move by Councillor Howley, seconded by Councillor Lego. And we didn't have that particular councillor because we had to lift it for the option. So I'll just go around the table, starting at the top of my screen. Councillor Lego. Yeah, no, I think uh, we should make it a holiday. We're, uh, we're, we're leading the way with the, the truth and reconciliation uh, group that we have going that you're, you're on as well, Mayor. Um, I think it, it, it's part of the truth and reconciliation, um, part of the steps that they wanted to, to move forward with. And I think it, it would be a good idea for, and I, and I see a lot of the agencies are also uh, following and, and gonna be taking this day off as well. So I'm for number one. Thank you. Councillor Bath. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of in favor of recognizing it and not make it a holiday. I'm concerned when you make it a holiday, most likely people just wander off and go fishing or swimming and, and don't actually think about what it's for. So I'd be more inclined to think it would be more recognition if it's uh, if it's brought up as uh, to recognize it as uh, like Armistice Day, for example, the same idea. 
uh, rather than a national holiday. Thank you. Councillor Fanlon. I, um, I, that's my, one of my worries is if, are people just going to take it as a day off and not participate in, in any of the uh, things that are going to be going on for that day there? And uh, yeah, that, that's, I don't know how you're going to get around it to uh, make it qualified for it. So it's either one or the other, I guess. I guess I'll go with. Uh, with uh, declaring a holiday, but still my concern is people not attending the uh, the events that are going on there. Thank you. Councillor Howie. I, I fully support making it a holiday. Um, I think it's like Council Lego said, it's, it's the right step forward in being um, progressive in this and, and uh, observing um, what we've been called to do as a municipality, as a country, um, uh, and as a province. Um, I think that's the direction that we should go. I, I know the schools won't uh, have it recognized as a holiday um, for, the, for the students as of yet. I'm hoping that changes, but I think uh, the municipality should uh, definitely make this a holiday and observe it as such. Thank you. Councillor Timpson. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a good idea. Um, I, I appreciate the uh, other um, concerns uh, expressed. Um, however, it, since the others are, the other organizations are going that route, I think it's, I think we are, um, I think we should. Um, I think there would be some advantage into looking at it in a year if everybody in the community was willing to do the same. Uh, but I think that given that um, it it's ten, tends to be the uh, thinking there, I think we should uh, I think we should make it a holiday. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, I also support this as being a holiday. Um, I, I think in light of the kind of the unfolding of this situation over the last year and longer and this has come to a point where I think this should be a holiday. Um, as much as we want to sit back and wonder about what people will do, um, that's not our place here. Our place is to recognize this and, and move forward with it and, and recognize as a holiday. The federal government has, has recognized as a holiday. The provincial government is recognizing as a holiday. So municipal government, I think we should also recognize this as a holiday as well and encourage people to take part and develop some understanding and further our understanding of why it is a holiday. So I support it. Thank you. Yeah, I think council has expressed all the, there's not much left for me to say. I think in some ways I share the concern about, will it be recognized? Well, some people, but each, each and every holiday we have has people who take it as a holiday when it might be a day of observance for something. Um, I think it, it, We'd be out of step as a municipality with our with our role and with our constituents and agencies and even businesses in town who, who are, are doing so so i fully support it and i uh, think that we must uh well you know this year we're doing the the week of uh of, we encouraged events throughout the week uh, from agencies and we'll be putting that on our, our website and creating a bit of a brochure the municipal truth and reconciliation committee and if we can do something like that every year as a municipality and and perhaps have a proclamation regarding the, the day uh, and do our part uh, to uh, observe and honor it uh, as well as uh, not as making it a holiday so i think we can put this to the vote unless anybody has anything else to say uh I, i'll put to, to the vote then uh, clerk uh, the it is the first option that council designates september 30th each year as a holiday in recognition of the national day for truth and reconciliation so i guess what we're doing is deleting the other two options from the motion that was table is that right you tell me how you want to proceed uh yes mayor lawrence i think that's uh, that's uh, that course of action is uh, is great so having said that all in favor Carried.
Thank you. Mm. Updating council appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. The council acknowledges and accepts the resignation of Councillor Corey Lego from the Kenora District Home for the Age Board of Directors. And further, the council, approve, the council approves amending Schedule A to bylaw number 92-18, being a bylaw to make appointments to various boards, commissions, and committees by deleting Councillor Corey Lego from the Kenora District Home for the Age Board of Directors and appointing, appointing Councillor Blank to the Kenora District Home for the Age Board of Directors. So we'll put that on the table and then we'll have a discussion about who is who, who we're filling in the blank with. Uh, moved by Councillor Fanlin, seconded by Councillor Cassidy. And I guess the first question I might ask, you know, are there any volunteers to step into the Canard District Home for the Age? Let's hope there are. <laughs> Does anybody want to take on this? Okay, I'll put it out there that I don't want to. Um, and I'll go to Councillor Bath. Yeah, I, I don't want to. Uh, this will, I don't think uh, for a short term is left in our, our council that uh, it would be worthwhile to have me because I'm probably not going to run in the next term. Councillor Fenlon. Yeah, I don't think I want to. No. Okay, there's one that sounds slightly like there might be a chance. Well, Councillor Howie. I don't think so. Councillor Timpson. Well, taking on a board, I'm on two boards for council and they are a lot of work. Um, <laughs> And as I've said before, if we're totally, totally, totally stuck, I would allow my name to stand as long as they would know that uh, I may not be able to get there all the time. But if anybody else is interested, I'm that's fine. <laughs> we have one more to go, but the clerk has a, a, a comment. Uh, to you, Mayor Lawrence, also just to uh, uh, remind Council that this uh, this is a shared appointment with um, uh, Dryden, Ignace, Mation, and Pickle Lake. So if there is no one on our Council who wishes to step in, um, you could direct me to reach out to the clerks of those municipalities to see if any of their members uh, wish to, uh, uh, to step in. Uh, this will mean that um, Next term, there will be no one from Sioux Lookout on that board because this was our turn, essentially. Um, so our turn to serve on that board won't come up for another uh, three terms of council. <clears throat> thank you. Councillor Cassidy. Uh, no, thank you. Back to you, Councillor Timpson. Uh, you're, are you willing to let your name stand? I would. I would feel better if you did approach Dryden and Ignace and Pickle Lake, and if at that point there was nobody, then I would I would do it. But at this point, that would be my my request. Uh, clerk or CAO, or even uh, Councillor Lego, are there any repercussions to us not appointing somebody from Sula County? Any when I say repercussions, what? Um, yeah, I'll just use that word. I don't, I don't believe so. They have uh, probably one, two, three, four, five. They have six or six people on the board right now. They just uh, got two new people um, at the last meeting. Um, I would, I would have loved to stay on, but I don't agree with the, the uh, man mandates of vaccination for employers. So I, I can't consciously sit there and, and be part of a board that I don't agree with what's going on. So that's why I, I resigned. Okay, understood. Um, clerk um, and CAO, uh, your thoughts on, on us, uh, not if we go to Dryden or one of the other communities, any thoughts? Um, I, I'm looking at the CAO. I, I, I can't see her as well this evening. So I'm, I'm trying to gauge if she has something to say before I speak. Did you want to? Speaking um, Sorry. I would just say there's roughly a year left in the term, a little bit more than a year left in the term. So um, 
I don't think it would be that detrimental um, if it was another municipality that uh, appointed somebody to the board. Okay. Councillor Timpson, did I see you with your hand up again? Yeah, I was going to say if we could even just determine from them, um, you know, how long they're going to be doing virtual and whether they would permit on a permanent basis uh, a virtual member. That may be something that, you know, that, that would be a consideration for me is at this point, the travel would be difficult. Councillor Lego, you had a comment on that? Yeah, um, I believe for the winter that they were considering going back to virtual. Um, right now they're doing uh, in-house meetings in Kenora, so you would have to go to Kenora. And it's the last Thursday of every month. So it is a three hour drive there, but they will, if you go overnight, they will cover your hotel. So Councillor Timpson, I'll put it back to you for one last time. Um, do we call, con the clerk calls other municipalities or are you? Yes, I would prefer that. But again, okay. if, if they're um, stuck, uh, we're stuck, I will do it. And if we can do it virtually, that would be even better. So, Is that sufficient direction, clerk? Uh, to you, Mayor Lawrence, yes, that's uh, that uh, that's that's great for me. I will uh, uh, reach out to the other communities um, um, uh, tomorrow or, or before the end of this week, and uh, and hopefully they'll be able to get back to us uh, uh, in a timely fashion. All right. And what do we do with the motion on the table? Um, I um, I think for now it can just be withdrawn. Um, if the one of the other communities does step up, then we don't have to do anything else. If uh, if they don't, then uh, I will just bring it back uh, to a subsequent meeting. So I need to ask the mover in, uh, to withdraw it? Yes. And you need to remind me who the mover is, I'm sorry. Uh, that was uh, Councillor Fenelon. Can we withdraw the motion, uh, Councillor Fenelon? Yes. And we, uh, do we need sorry. to go to the second? Sorry, yeah. uh, my apologies uh, to you, Mayor Lawrence. Um, what we, uh, I, I got a little ahead of myself there. We should probably still um, pass the first part uh, where uh, council okay. acknowledges and accepts the resignation. Um, so maybe we just keep that piece in. So Councilor Fenlon, we have amend the uh, resolution. You're okay with that? Accepting Councilor Lego's resignation, but not uh, appointing anybody else. Yes. Do we need to ask the seconder? I can't remember now if we- uh, To you, Mayor Lawrence, no, we do not. That was changed, okay, thank you. So uh, the motion on the floor is the acceptance of Councillor Lego's resignation from the Kenora District Homes for the Age Board of Directors, period. Um, and we had a mover and a seconder, all in favor? Carried, thank you. And item 7.6, municipal imp implementation of proof of vaccination for a recreation center. The council acknowledges the implementation of Ontario Reg Regulation 645-21, being a regulation that amends Ontario Regulation 364-20, rules for areas at step three and at the roadmap exit step, and directs staff to take the necessary measures to implement the requirements respecting proof of vaccination at the recreation center and Memorial Arena. Uh, need a mover, move by. Councillor Fanlin, seconded by Councillor Howie. And discussion, I'm sorry, um, was there a lifter for this? I, I usually would start with, I didn't have a note. Sorry, through you, Mayor Lawrence, uh, yes, both uh, Councillors uh, Lego and Howie expressed interest in speaking um, at the outset. Thank you. Councillor Lego. Yeah, uh, just like the last one we just went over, um, I don't like anything that's going on with our province with these mandates and vaccine passports. I, to me, there it's medical discrimination. You're, you're cutting out 25% of our population that aren't vaccinated, that are taxpayers. And you're, you're denying them access to a public funded facility. So um, I don't know what, I know we're just, I was told we're just following what's being directed by the province. But uh, to me, this is constitutionally wrong and morally wrong and it's discriminatory in my opinion. Um, I have a whole list of comments and questions, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to go over them. It's uh, my, my frustration on this is at, at a peak with, the, with this whole thing. So I'll just uh, end that there. All right, thank you. 
Councillor, uh, was it Councillor Howie? Uh, I, I think this is a uh, the right step forward. Um, I, I, my question is going to be surrounding uh, other uh, staff in, in these facilities. I'm not sure it's not quite clear in the in the mandates from the province around that. I don't know that the CAO or, or clerk could could answer that question when it comes to municipal staff and proof of vaccination and those implications. So CAO, you may know it, uh, Yes, I can answer that. It's in the guidance notes to the regulation. It doesn't specifically say it in the regulation, but in the guidance notes, it indicates that the one exemption for uh, be having to be totally vaccinated is for municipal staff. So while the public has to be vaccinated, municipal staff do not have to be vaccinated. That's an exemption. I'll go around the table. Uh, I don't see Councillor Howie. Uh, we can come back to you after uh, uh, Councillor Bath. Yeah, I, I also think it's the right. It's the right direction to take. Um, I I am a little confused why not, uh, staff wouldn't have to be uh, meet the criteria. It seems to me they they should be meeting the criteria if the public do and everybody else does. But I, I fully support this. I think this is where we need to be going. It's no different than other regulations that have come down on us and, and infringed on our rights not to wear a seat belt, not to wear a helmet when you ride a motorcycle. The same things are happening is, is, uh, is an infringement for the safety of other people. So I'm, I'm for, uh, completely in favor of it. CAO, uh, I'll come back to you. I, I'll just let councillors uh, have comments and then I think you, you might be able to uh inform a few a few items here. Councillor Fanlin. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm for it. I can't, uh, and I would like to see other people um, take, uh, take uh, both, both vaccines, needles. And I don't know, that's my my point of view anyways i don't want to be sitting at the table with somebody and having to worry about whether he's been vaccinated or not and stuff like that so and i've got two vaccines already in a ways okay thank you councillor how i think councillor how you had uh, correct councillor timpson uh, yes I, I i see this as it's not, not discrimination against um, uh, medical. I don't see that as medical discrimination. I see it as protection of um, other people, uh, including the, the non-vaccinated. And, um, and I think if we, you know, given that symptoms can, people can be asymptomatic, that the Delta variant is, I believe, 10 times more contagious than the original and uh, that we are seeing breakthroughs because of the breakthrough um, illness, because of the vaccine, of the um, Delta variant. I think we're at a very critical time right now. Um, and I, I think, you know, let, we just have to look at what happened in Alberta. You can't get into the ICU because uh, they opened too quickly and, um, <laughs> Uh, people's health is in danger because of COVID, but people are in danger because of the, the fact that they can't get elective, not even elective surgery, they sometimes can't get surgery they, they need to have. And I do know that there are cases of the variant in the North and in there has been in Sioux Lookout. And I don't think we can take this um, too seriously. Um, I don't understand the um, the why it's not constitutional. Maybe Councillor Legal uh, could explain some of that. I don't I don't fully understand the uh, what section of the constitution that we would be violating if we go this route. Um. I can come back to you, Councillor Lego, if, you, if you'd like, uh, or I can go to Councillor Cassidy to uh, to finish off the, the first round table here. Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, I also, I won't support any legislation that uh, coerces people, um, gives, takes away people's freedoms in order to coerce them to get a vaccine if they're not willing to. I think 
education, promotion, and that is the way to do it. I played a whole hockey season, 24 games last year, unvaccinated with following the guidelines and they were put in place to keep people safe and they did. And now all of a sudden we're not safe unless we're not vaccinated. Um, I don't, I don't agree with it. I think it's a slippery slope. The goalpost is continually moving and I, I don't agree with this. So I will not acknowledge it. Thank you. Um, CAO, uh, my understanding is that uh, what you are proposing, staff is proposing, is the base requirements according to the, the provincial regulations that are being put out. Is that correct? Correct. This isn't going over and above. This is the, just the, the basement level, the base requirements according to now provincial regulation is provincial law that we must follow. Is that correct? Correct. Um, at the onset of, of COVID, what we established to do was follow the regulations as they moved um, through the various stages, uh, moving forward and then closing, uh, uh, doing the lockdown and then reopening again. So we followed all the regulations thus far um, and also uh, best practices through our um, recommendations from the Northwest City Health Unit. So if we were looking for advice on how to, to uh, to uh, maneuver certain uh, legislation or whatever and how we should implement it. We also reached out to the Northwest Health Unit as well for advice. Thank you. Um, just, I'm fully supportive of, of doing this as the, this is the, the best advice. Um, my question is, it, it, it puzzles me greatly that municipal staff will be tasked with, with uh, admitting or not admitting people based on vaccinations and yet municipal staff may not be vaccinated. It, it seems to be counterintuitive that the, the one saying you can't come in hasn't complied with the, the requirement. Any comments there? Or what's the, what is the province saying about that? Um, like we just got the regulations yesterday at about noon. So we're still, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, we were surprised and um, that's what we were kind of waiting for because when they originally announced that this regulation would be coming into place on September 22nd, there was no comment with reference to current staff uh, working for the municipality that may be in any of these areas that uh, are restricted and requiring double vaccinations. So uh, the legislation finally came out yesterday and we staff, as staff, we were actually surprised that our staff don't have to be vaccinated. Um, in comparison at the daycare, uh, they're legislated under the Ministry of um, Education, daycare staff have to be fully vaccinated to be able to work. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have to submit to one negative, uh, have a COVID test and submit a negative result once every seven days. So you're still allowed to work, but you have to submit to COVID testing. So that's legislated for daycare providers. Um, but as far as recreational staff, um, there is nothing. It just says they're exempt. Given what you've seen previously in the development of regulations and guidelines, policies, uh, given my suspicion is that this may be changing, may be refined, may be tweaked, modified wholesale in, in the coming week or two. Is that your anticipation? What do you think? Um, we, well, in conversations with staff, I anticipate that it will be challenged because some municipalities have implemented policies where they're all municipal staff and the city of Thunder Bay is an example. Uh, they're requiring all of their municipal councillors and staff to be double vaccinated. So uh, I anticipate that uh, possibly this may be challenged either by the public at large because municipal staff don't have to be vaccinated that work at the facility um, and or unions if we implement uh, the policy that they do have to be vaccinated. So um, we're hoping that in the coming weeks that um, there'll be more legislation that will further define that because we can see that there will be challenges. All right, well, my, my feeling is that uh, probably should be all municipal staff, but my feeling also is that uh, that should come from the province and that the province, in my opinion, may be coming out with refinements, changes as, as, as the days go by here. And, and as you say, challenges. So. Uh, it, I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, Council, further comments? Councillor Lego. Yeah, I do agree with you that uh, the government may change their mind. It depends on who wins the election. 
So if the Liberals do not win, then there may not be a billion dollars for the provinces for the for the uh, vaccine passport. So whether that'll change their minds and we'll, we'll wait and see till the 22nd of September. Um, also, I would like to know what other public funded facilities the unvaccinated will not be able to enter. Um, at, through you, Mayor Lawrence, at the current time, it's just our recreational complex, our, our recreation center that is affected by this legislation, unless we were to hold um, public gatherings in the gymnasium or some other uh, facility that we have where there's large gatherings, then the, then the rules would apply uh, depending on the type of event that was happening. But right now, the only... Um, uh, facility in the municipality that's affected is the recreation complex. Okay, uh, it's also uh, it's read a, a quote uh, it says that people who have a condition or conditions or are taking medication that weaken their immune system may not be fully protected even if they are fully vaccinated. Will these people also not be able to enter the facility? They have to provide medical um, under the under, I can't remember what stage it was or or what part of the um, the COVID nineteen stages that the province was in. Um, it used to be, um, for example, with the masks, people could enter buildings, and if they said they had a medical condition, they didn't have to wear a mask, and staff had to accept it. We couldn't question it under the legislation. We weren't allowed to, but now uh, staff can. So if somebody comes into the facility and says they have a medical condition for whatever, whatever it is, and they cannot be vaccinated or they were advised not to be vaccinated by their medical uh, uh, professional, then they would have to provide documentation that they are exempt. And, and there's a whole host of people that already have natural immunity that may have never got tested. And now they're gonna be denied as well, even though they have a, a more robust immune to COVID. This is a big can of worms to me, so it's crazy. Uh, Councilor Cassidy. Yeah, with uh, staff time with our bylaw and our municipal staff that are inspected to, expected to enforce this, will we be submitting an invoice to the province for that time to recoup costs? Uh, there's no- we're taking them away from other duties. Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, there's no mechanism to recover the costs at this time. Councillor Lego. Yeah, my, this is my final question. Um, let me go back to all my questions here. Uh, with 25% of uh, the Northwest Health Unit not being vaccinated, um, will those people not allowed to enter the facility, the recreation facility and more, be getting a rebate on their taxes because you're denying them access to a public funded facility? Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, at this time, there's no mechanism to refund people their taxes uh, because their taxes go to a variety of different things. Uh, staff are simply following the legislation in accordance to the regulations that were put out. Um, if council wants any kind of rebate, so that will be directed through council. Thank you. Councillor Timpson. I just want to ask a question. How is this different from um, requiring children going to school to be vaccinated? I do believe they have to be vaccinated for school. Am I correct on that? And if so, how is that? How is this different? I can't speak to children attending school because I don't. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been paying attention to that because I don't have children in school age. But um, right now, under the regulation, if you are under the age of 18, uh, there's specific rules for youth uh, using the uh, recreation center. So, for example, and this. I'm just the messenger. It doesn't. Some of it uh, is a little hard to, to to comprehend. But for example, if you are a youth under the age of 18, you can play in organized sports. So for example, you can go to the arena, even though you're eligible to get the vaccines. You're you're exempt if you're in organized sports. So for example, hockey, 
um, competitions, things like that. But if you are under 18 and you want to attend the gymnasium to do basketball, uh, just free throw, or you want to go to the fitness center, you have to be fully vaccinated. So it's different rules depending on where you're going and what you're doing. Actually, my question was a little more sort of more globally that, you know, there is mandatory vaccination for children going to school, correct? So, correct. Yeah. and that's mandatory and people pay taxes to go to public schools. So they would not be allowed into school if they weren't vaccinated, correct? So I don't see this as any different. And maybe the people that don't agree with this could enlighten me on how it is, how they see it as different. The Councillor Cassidy and Councillor Lego, are you able to uh, expand on that for me? Councillor Lego. Yeah, um, like Councillor Cash said, this is a slippery slope. You're, you're getting into my body, my choice. Um, for me, people that are, are taking the vaccine to be protected. That's why you're taking the vaccine. You, sh you, you should have that in your head that you are protected. So I don't know why denying other people access that are paying for the facility is, 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 a, is, is the way to go. You know, that's what Doug, Doug Ford just came out and said, we are bringing in the vaccine passport to encourage people to get vaccinated and to protect to protect the vaccinated the vaccine is supposed to protect you and if it's not protecting you then we have an issue but you're supposed to be protected when you get two doses of or one dose depending on which vaccine you get so there would be different people with different levels of protection. Yes. Um, some people who are immunocompromised will have been vaccinated and still they are at much higher risk and peril than, than, um, than people who aren't immunocompromised. People mm -hmm. who have chronic conditions or on uh, chronic uh, pharmaceuticals uh, to, uh, for various reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Those people are still quite vulnerable. Well, and you also have the fact that the vaccine's effectiveness wanes over time, which has been displayed in the Israeli data that came out a couple of weeks ago. I, th I think that data is quite recent and uh, yeah. I, I, probably not peer reviewed yet. So, <laughs> yes. But no, I, I, I just have my opinion on it, and everyone has an opinion on things, and we, we make a decision between the seven of us and we move forward. Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, Councillor Timpson, I'd just like to add that I'm not going to sit here and attest to being a medical professional. I'm not, I'm not sitting here telling people not to get vaccinated. I am not advocating for any of that. What I'm advocating is, what, what has me concerned is the moving goalposts. We need 70%, now we need 80%, now we need 90%. It, it just, it keeps, it's a little more, a little more, a little more. That is my concern. That's where this is going. I've never had to show my immunization records to, to go out to eat, to go play hockey at the arena. That is the difference here. The school, those are different types of vaccines. They've been around a lot longer. And that's all I'll say on that. But it is the principle of this. Um, I, I think there needs to be better, better discussion, long-term discussion not just our premier getting up and saying, go get vaccinated, do it now, or we're gonna take this away from you. There needs to be better, more in-depth discussion and dialogue. That's how people understand things and learn more about it. I'm just, I don't see enough of that. I don't think we need to be pushing people to do something if they're not willing to do it in that sense. And I don't support this. So that's where I'll stand on that. I would just say on the moving goalposts, the the virus is a moving situation. It's not it's not a static. Uh, this is something new to science and uh, things. Uh, the beauty of science is that uh, they science can change as the situation changes, as the observations change with the scientific methods that are put forward. 
the goalposts move as, as the situation changes with the virus. The virus mutates and changes, so the goalposts need to be moved. Councillor Lego, did you have your hand up? No, I'm sorry. Any further discussion, Council? Councillor Howie. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, the, the campaign to vaccinate people is ultimately to reduce the risk posed to the population and, you know, tamp out the, the spread of COVID-19. And we saw this, this kind of success in, in outbreaks of polio, and we, we've seen the impact and the success that large mass vaccination campaigns can have. We've seen also the effects on our population that the spread of a COVID-19 infection can do the mutations of a COVID-19 infection can do. And we've also experienced losses, even in our own community, of those that have suffered from COVID-19. Now, to say that you know last year we didn't have a vaccine and we did fine under restrictions, yeah, that's correct, because there wasn't a vaccine for the majority of you know last year. But we have to keep in, in like Councillor, or sorry, Mayor Lawrence said, this is a moving target and we have to evolve as the situation can continues to grow. Councillor Bath said that the same thing happened with seatbelts and helmets. We're here to ultimately serve the greater good and reduce the risk. And that's what we have to do as a municipality. I would like to see a mandate for vaccinations for, for staff and all those in, in public front-facing positions, not only to protect themselves, but to protect the public they serve at the same time. So I am in full support of this and I would like to see it pass without any objection. Well, <laughs> good luck on, on the without any objection part, uh, Councillor Howley. I agree with you, I'd like to see it pass too, uh, but uh, I understand there is going to be some objection. Um, is there anything further? I don't think we're gonna bring the two positions any closer, um, so, uh, I think uh, not seeing any hands raised, I will put the, there's a clear motion on the table, I think. Uh, Councillor Timpson, yes. Uh, no, I was just going to say, you know, I do appreciate uh, uh, Councillor Lego and Councillor Cassidy's uh, forthrightness and um, the, the, the justifications that they, that they, uh, they have. And uh, I do agree there, there has to be more education out there about, about this, this issue. So thank you to them for that. Thank you. Anything further, Council? So, uh, Clerk, there is a motion on the table that I can call the vote on, correct? There's no... Um, and I think it was pretty clear. So I will call the vote. All in favour? Carried. Thank you. Bylaws. Clerk, you'll have to, I don't have the bylaw here. You'll have to do bylaw 90-21. Uh, through you, Mayor Lawrence, certainly. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the resolution is that uh, council gives three readings and passes uh, bylaw number 90-21, uh, being a bylaw to permanently close, declare surplus, and authorize the sale of a highway of the municipality. Uh, and that would be uh, the Stiles application uh, respecting 527 Moosehorn Road. Moved by Councillor Lego, seconded by Councillor Fenlon. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Notices of motion to reconsider. Notices of motion in this case. Councillor Cassidy, notice of motion, Pioneer Cemetery recognition in official plan. The council directs staff to undertake an update to the Municipality of Sulacote official plan to recognize the cultural heritage feature known locally as the Pioneer Cemetery located west of the CN Iron Bridge. Uh, Clerk, I need a, a mover and a, this will uh, be a mover. Lawrence, uh, yeah, so just a mover and a seconder this evening um, for discussion at uh, the October meeting. Gotcha, right. Yeah, that's so motions to reconsider or consider put forward in this way. Council has to decide whether they want to do that, and that's what we're doing tonight. And then it's discussed at the next meeting. So uh, the question is: Are we going to reconsider or consider consider this? It's not a reconsideration; it's a consider this motion put forward by Councillor Cassidy. Uh, do I call for a mover and a seconder, or just call the vote? Uh, uh, just uh, in this case, just the mover and the seconder. 
Oh, I see. We only need to move her in a second. Yeah, we don't vote on it this evening. Okay, and can can the councillor who put forward the notice of motion can he be a mover or seconder or he or she? Ideally, he would be the mover. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so moved by Councillor Cassidy. Uh, is there a seconder for this, Councillor Lego? We've done. Uh, that's that's what we're doing tonight. Thank you, Clerk. Thanks, Councillor Cassidy, Councillor Lego. Um, we're into the councillor report section, so. I'll just go around the table, the, my screen, starting at the top, Councillor Lego. Yeah, uh, pretty quiet month, uh, CEO's uh, performance appraisals and uh, went to the meeting in Kenora, my last meeting. And on the 10th, I went and did my civic duty and I voted. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bath. Yeah, my, uh, sorry, my usual meetings, uh, uh, PACE meetings, because everything's been virtual. Uh, we're, PACE is in the process of hiring a new, uh, um, a new uh, um, director. And we're probably going to we'll be having interviews next week. So you know, by the end, by next meeting, I can tell you who we have. Uh, I also attended my hydro meetings. And, uh, and uh, other than that, it just, just seems to be really busy doing stuff. Thank you. Councillor Fallon. Yes, uh, LCC meeting was the only one I had. Uh, um, good discussion on the forest management plan that's out there for approval uh, for contingency blocks within the plan. They're looking for um, LCC's comments on it, and there was, there was a lot of comments on it. But, last night and things are working fairly well. Thank you. Councillor Howie. Yeah, a pretty quiet past month for myself as well. Attended the special council meetings. Um, I also ensured that I was registered to vote. I've been researching all the parties, watching the debates. So I encourage everybody to make sure that you are registered to vote, make sure that you've researched every party's platform and you understand where you align with the most. Um, that's the best step to do. Be open-minded a bit about the, about the different platforms and uh, just let's all get out and vote uh, in this coming federal election. Councillor Timpson. Uh, yeah, I'm not particularly busy, but uh, Environment Committee got back in motion on the 2nd of September. Um, the library board continues to meet uh, to uh, work with Wendy McDonald, who is in an acting position there as an interim manager to um, get the library back open again and deal with staffing issues. Um, <clears throat> Kenora District Municipal Association, uh, we had a, a meeting uh, last week and um, oh, the Kenora District Municipal Association did a delegation to Minister Rickford uh, to promote the sale of land, uh, crown land to municipalities. That's a, a major issue throughout the throughout the region, and um, allegedly, uh, uh, Minister Rickford was quite surprised to hear from the municipal association. So I think it was very positive. Um, and um, they felt it was a very positive um, uh, delegation. Uh, and a board meeting with the Sioux Lookout Mental Health, uh, Men Menion Health Center board, um, looking at new directions that we want to take. Um, and uh, other than that, that was my month. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Um, relatively quiet. Um, yeah, Environment Committee um, for me, working through that um, and some Cedar Bay stuff. Cedar Bay Smile Cookies campaign's on. I see lots of uh, folks have been out there, so get your smile cookies. And I also did my civic duty and voted. So. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I but should just thank you, Councillor Lego, again for filling in for me at last month's regular council meeting. Thank you. Um, 
And since that time, I've been involved with Kenora District Services Board uh, meetings and governance committee of the of the board, the Northwest Health Unit board meetings, uh, and various other things. Most of which you see reports on through the uh, as the uh, CAO puts out her reports. Involved with meetings with LCBO, looking at trying to get security into the LCBO locally. Um, a call as a follow up to AMO with a with a, a possible developer for for uh, facilities in Sulacout. Um, it goes on, but I, actually, I think it's been a bit quieter lately too. It's a, it was it was a pleasure to get to have that time off. I went up and supported lo our local tourism industry for the second year in a, in a row, going up on a houseboat up Black Sewell and. Uh, it's a wonderful experience for, to do that. So that's that's my month. Tomorrow we'll be smiling and uh, please, 10 a, I'm on duty at 10 a.m. at Tim Hortons if anybody wants to, to join in and uh, smile with me. Thank you. Um, confirmatory bylaw. And boy, it seems like we had a, a lot of meat on the agenda tonight, but it's only an hour and 10 minutes and we're through it. That bylaw number 94-21 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Municipality of Sulacote, September 15, 2021 regular council meeting be read a first, second and third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Howie, seconded by Councillor Bath. All in favor? Carried. And in our usual way, we are adjourned and we say good night and see you next time. I think we have a meeting coming up on the 27th, a special meeting is the next meeting, September 27th.